Welcome to Mount the Machines. This is issue 70 and we're doing an Isaac Harkovich double feature. Even though it feels more like a one and a half feature. But I'll talk about that soon enough. Two 35 point games. Sacrifice vs. Jar and Supply and Demand vs. Boulder. Enjoy! Alright, this first one we're going to do a little different than usual because in all seriousness it's not much of a battle worth reporting. When Isaac Harkovich came out, he did polarize Kador players. Some saw him as a great godsend, finally a caster that buffs the armor of Kador and Jax, even if it's only for one turn, and he also has speed shenanigans. Others thought of him as one of the weaker casters, because he still is only 6 focus, does not really support but require infantry, and yada yada yada. As you might be able to tell, I'm more in the godsend camp and thusly I was really looking forward to fielding him. The force I picked for these two games was the following. Harkovich, Black Ivan, Spriggan, Juggernaut, Minimum Pikeman with unit detachment, Grey Lauternian, Zulus Wischnallur. Let me explain some choices. The Elvish Odd Parent plays an important role in this list. As I'm intending to have Ascot up and running each turn every turn, he basically makes Harkovich a 7 focus caster. The Grey Lauternian was in there to provide, both provide clouds, magical attacks and ice cages especially. Pikeman and Jax aren't the most accurate, but usually cages are enough to make boosting unnecessary, freeing up focus. I chose the regular Pikeman unit detachment because of the mobility it does provide. Jarl's list contained a Diatron Mauler, a Troll Axer and a Troll Impaler. He also had a Thumper Crew, Minimum Creelstone Bearers with Elder, Minimum Champions and Maximum Pig Bushwhackers. Keeping in mind the scenario, here's the end of turn 1. Let's start with the hindsight right now. As it is completely obvious, I went second. Therefore, I got to place my models after he did his. But I cannot, for the love of God, remember why I misdeployed this horrendously. At least one of the heavies on my right is not needed there. At this rate, I'm meeting the stone bearers and champions with just Black Ivan, so it's no use having two heavies over there to score at the flag. Switching the positions of the pikemen with, say, the juggernaut would have been way better. As you can see, by the end of his next turn, most of the infantry and the mauler are coming down on the zone. I respond by minifeeting the pikemen and charging the spriggan to keep the pigs from firing, but there's only a thin line of pikemen shielding Harkovich. So what happens is that he clears them out and then smacks Harkovich out of the game with the mauler. Jarl wins! In hindsight, this was my second game with Hark, and I was still getting used to him, but I more, or more than less lost this game when setting up. That being said, I like the army composition and the caster a lot. I'd love to have a Coldun Lord though, since Black Ivan hardly needs more than one point of focus. And the small boost of mobility the regular UA gives is really useful when engaging shooters. Ok, with this lesson on how to do deployment wrong, on to the main event. In my second game that day, I agreed to help Phil test out one of his tournament lists. He is bringing Baldur the Stonecleaver with Megalith, a regular World Warden, a unit of Druids with Overseer, a minimum unit of Thorn Wolf Riders, a unit of Shifting Stones and a proxied Lord of the Feast. That's the Extoler right there. My list is the same as before and we rolled Supply and Demand as our scenario. He gets first turn and basically runs everything up sans Baldur who casts Solid Ground and Stone Skin on the Lord of the Feast. Together with, ele with elemental protection on the druids, my crowd control measures are severely gimped right now. I'm also left flabbergasted at the wolf riders. They're how fast again? And light cavalry. Sure. Oh, they're just range 7. Well, I guess they can't have it all, unlike la raptors. In my turn, the wooden chip ghosts the juggernaut's position. The turning clouds, Ivan and two pikemen. I run stuff up, the blizzarded, blizzarded pikemen swerve to the right. My thought was that, should stuff go after them, it won't be around for the main fight. Round 2 for Circus sees Baldur upkeeping solid ground and stone skin. 
On my left, his models merely move further up. The warden tries earth spikes at the juggernaut, yet does nothing of note. The stones warp themselves up, which was bothersome, and the druids advance with counter magic and protection. And some of them want to force bold Ivan and miss, so he gets to scoot twice, ending where he is now. The remaining force bolts don't damage and don't crit. My right flank, however, falls apart. <laughs> Between the Wolf Riders' assault and that completely insane Lord of the Feast, I lose all but two pikemen and those two fail their command. Finally, Baldur Forest warps up and pops his feet, also putting down a forest right in front of my Spriggan. Uh, great, I have Pathfinder on my whole battle group and now I don't even get to use it. Ever since there is no way for my Jax to reach his line this turn, I decide to pull them back. Sulus upkeeps Escort. The Jax move backwards due to the scenario he will have to come for me. Ivan and the Spriggan hawk Baldur's forest so tightly that he just can't jump into there. Harkovich moves over and casts broadsides, but all shots fired this round only achieve some damage on the Wolf Warden and a dead Druid Overseer. The turn he moves up and sprays the Wolf Riders. Turns out power 12 is highly sufficient to drop those gals. At least one of them, the others are left hurt. In his third turn, Baldur drops the custom forest, up keeps solid ground. The stalemate on the left continues. After learning that a World Warden has only has three fury, I can understand why he isn't just sending it into my lines. On the right, the Lord of the Feast kills the remaining pikemen, virtuosos his raven into the Grey Lords, and then kills the Turnian too. That thing is definitely trying to piss me off on purpose. The druids move up to make way for Megalith, then he moves Megalith and forgets the druids' remaining actions. Thank you. Megalith, however, smashes my objective. Funnily enough, the explosion is strong enough to reduce the Lord of the Feast to one single box and it deals substantial damage to Megalith itself. My turn, Sirius upkeeps Escort. Time to apply axe to face. Harkovich spreads the focus love, the Spriggan and Ivan get three each. Then Harkovich activates and feeds. Then he charges the Lord of the Feast, hammers him into the ground and beat backs a step away. The Juggernaut charges the World Warden, doing serious damage to him with the Ice Axe and with his fist crush, crushes a Shifting Stone. The Spriggan charges Megalith but cannot drop him. Only after Ivan charges in does the big world go down. And I forget about the free shots here. Round 4 and Boulder drops solid ground. He's going to do something and that'll need all his fury. First off, the Druids move and force bolt the Spriggan. In doing so, they drag him up far enough that he's no longer engaging the Wolf Riders. Also, he's smart enough not to bolt Ivan. Even the slightest chance of triggering dodge is too much. The Wolf Riders assault Harkovich for some damage, but he proves a very tough nut sitting at armor 21. Then the World Warden leaves combat with the Juggernaut with the intention of casting, or rather geomancing, Stone Skin onto Baldur. My dice are so awesome on the free strike though, that the resulting damage knocks out his spirit in one swing, so no free stone skin for him. Baldur proceeds by casting it himself, then placing another forest behind Harkovich and forest walking there. It still, t it still takes all his remaining fury, but he does manage to take Harkovich out on the last swing. Baldur the Stone Cleaver wins! In hindsight, even though it's a bad start with Harkovich, I'm still showing this game for a number of reasons. First, the endeavor that was Hark's assassination. Second, the insanity of the Lord of the Feast. Third, it was a good game. I'm even more in love with the list than before, though the pikemen seem debatable. As they're mainly crowd control, which the jacks can't exactly do, assassins seem a good alternative. That is what I'd change to the list. My VIP of the match was the Juggernaut. Sure, Ivan and Spriggan took out Megalith, but it took the two of them. The Juggernaut, with his dice rolls, simply hammered the Warden and that free strike was nothing short of awesome. A VIP of the match are the Pikemen, even though it's kinda unfair, since they didn't really stand much of a chance against this insane solo of doom. 
that they made the command check, they could have at least tried to kill or weaken the Lord of the Feast. My biggest tactical blunder... I guess Ivan could have charged into a more beneficial position, but it's hard to hide from Balder. Moving the turn in up so the Lord of the Feast could reach them was not really smart, but I wanted those wolf riders taken care of. They could have been spaced better, though. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we caught up on my material. Well, almost. The next game will feature a big guy with an axe and a small guy with a hammer, and a completely new and upstart player. Depending on when this will screen, there might be more coming. But as things stand, I want to implement the following change to Martin the Machines. Martin Machines. Each issue shall have a battle report at least, and then something. Maybe another report, maybe something on painting or tournament coverage. Just a little more content. Until then, farewell. <laughs>